Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In the conclusion to Tong's summary of Gilligan's Ethics of Care and some of the criticisms that have been made of it in response to those criticisms, she says that um, we don't want to try to, you know, rule um, traditional caring roles out altogether. Um, the world, like she said, would be a much worse place tomorrow than, than we're today if women were suddenly to stop meeting the physical and psychological needs of those who depend on them. Um, just because men and yes, children have more or less routinely taken advantage of some women's willingness to serve them does not mean that every woman's caring action should be contemptuously dismissed as yet another instance of uh, pathological masochism, fear of success, or passivity. So she says, care is worth rescuing. Care as a value is worth rescuing from these, these you know, um, ways of domination. She calls them patriarchal structures. We can think of it as historical ways in which women have gotten the short end of the stick, and sometimes still do get the short end of the stick, um, in, in, less, in, in some parts of our culture, but equal in, in, in some other parts. So um, she says, a person cannot truly care for someone if they're forced to do so. And what would that compulsion be if they're economically forced to care for someone? So if you're stuck in a situation where the only way that you can actually stay alive or you know, put food on the table is to care for another person, it's, it's, it's a bit coercive. It's not something that you can choose to give. Um, Social, if it's just a matter of social expectations, you know, very traditional communities. Or psychologically, if somebody's coercing that person psychologically. Um, so a person cannot truly care if they're forced to do so um, only under conditions, she says, of, of, of sexual equality and freedom can women care for men in any, without in any way diminishing, disempowering, or, and or disregarding them. So until these conditions are achieved, that's, that's kind of a utopian. Until these are achieved, we want to have some criteria for what care ought to look like. So, she says, care has to fulfill the one who is caring. So it has to be something that the person who is engaging in the care can say, yes, this, this is important to me, this is satisfying to me, this is something that I can willingly choose and endorse as part of my good, the way I want to be, the kind of person I want to be. Um, that would rule out a lot of cases where somebody just has to care because they're the one who's, you know, it's that their role or it's expected of them. Um, this is really interesting. She says, calls upon the unique and particular individuality of the person caring. So if I am caring for my daughter, there's no substitute for my caring for my daughter. Somebody else could care for her, but it would not be the same care. You know, I die. Um, she gets some stepdad somewhere down the line or some father figure or something like that. That's good. It's, I, I would love for her to be cared for by somebody else. But it won't be my individuality that will do that. There are certain things that I've shared with her. For example, I used to take her fishing, you know, or we would go out and, and blaze trails um, through, through the woods. We, you know, certain, like I remember one time, it's kind of silly to bring it up, but I mean, it was, you know, I had a machete and I was hacking away and stuff, and I cut my thumb. She got real worried because it started to bleed a lot, you know. 
and I stop the bleeding, and I, you know, don't tell anyone. We had like, a little secret between us, you know. But that's that's how care takes place, and, and those those sort of things are part of our individuality, in particular, particular, what you've shared with your parents, what you're going to share with people who you care for. Um, when you're caring, that that matters. That's why you can't be substituted for. Um, so that's one important criteria. The third important criteria. Um, is not produced by a person in a role because of gender with one gender engaging in nurturing behavior the other engaging in instrumental behavior. So it's not based on gender roles. So the, the guy doesn't get to automatically assume I'm going to show up and, and, and get cared for because I'm the guy. Uh, and there's certain ways in which women also traditionally expect caring to take place that this would also rule out as well. The, I'm not going to work, you're just supposed to take care of me sort of, sort of thing financially. That, that would rule that out as well. Um, but for the most part, she's concerned about men coming in and saying, you know, where's my dinner? Right? That's sort of uh, stereotypical type of, type of stuff. Um, <coughs> here's a very important thing that, that extends it a bit further. This won't be possible in other circumstances. Genuine care is reciprocated by the other person caring in return. This will only be possible in some circumstances, though, right? If you're caring for somebody who's an invalid, um, they probably won't be able to give you the level of care that you're giving them. Um, obviously, caring for children is, you know, dealing with very egoistic beings for a long, long time. <laughs> who are not that respectful of your wants and needs or, or desires or anything like that. So parents have to blow up and say, get the hell out of here. I just want some time to myself, you know. Um, but in, say, in adult relationships, think about a friendship, for example. If you care about your friend, that friend ought to be caring about you in return, right? Otherwise, it's kind of a one-way relationship. And you're being taken advantage. You're being taken advantage of in your your care. And this does happen to a lot of people. Um, then her fifth thing. This might be a bit optional, depending on what you want to make of it. Um, takes place within the framework of consciousness. Amazing. Now, you know, when you talk about that, it sounds like a uh, very academic kind of class thing, or activism, doesn't it? Like uh, engaging consciousness raising, kind of, actually it reminds you of the hippies from my age. I don't know what it reminds you guys of, um, but you hear this sort of stuff all the time. Um, it doesn't have to be. What do they mean by consciousness raising? Becoming aware of things, becoming aware of what's going on. You know, so for, for example, getting into an adult relationship, let's say it's a romantic relationship where you and your partner equally care about each other could help you to actually understand how your parents behave towards each other and whether it was good or bad. That would be an example of consciousness raising. It helps you understand things better. Um, I think she means it in a very political sense you probably don't necessarily need to, to push it that, that way. But if you like that sort of thing that, you know, and, you know, you get together, I guess, once a week and talk about how your relationship is helping you understand politics, I, I don't think that would be a bad thing. But I think this, this could be more about um, our own past, our narratives, where we're going, that sort of thing. So what do you think? Is this enough to sort of guarantee that care is going to be exercised rightly. Will this keep you on the tracks? Or not? Do you think there's anything left out? Any criteria that need to be in there that aren't in there? 
this is kind of a work in process, this ethics of care stuff. Um, so it's good, good to think about that.